Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Alessandro, nice to see you. Elke, Laura, Joaquin, Svenja. Svenja is connecting from Dubai. Hi, Svenja, nice to meet you. Okay. Um, so we start on time, Ahmed. Oh, nice to see you, Ahmed. Fantastic. Thank you for joining. John is joining. Thank you. So we have people from a lot of countries. I think they are all uh, joining more, but we would like to be on time. We have to tell you a lot of interesting things today. Hi, Ahmed. Uh, we really love people to show their cameras. If it's possible, it's more human. And um, yeah, if you can open your camera, we would really love it. Oh, Svenja, nice to ah, Hello. Wow. <laughs> A little Dubaian citizen. Hi, Svenja. What's his name? Jeremy. Sorry? Uh, Muna Nui. Ah, it's a girl. Sorry, Mona. A boy, a boy. Mona Noy. Mona Noy. Oh, interesting name. Yeah. Okay, Jean, nice to see you. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say hello to you. Um, I trained something. Masaje Merhaba. Did you understand me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm starting my Arabic classes in September because I think if you start in a new region, you have to be familiar with the people and their language and their yeah and their culture. No? So at least I try to learn a little bit. Thank you for joining International HR Talks. Uh, I think it's our tenth edition. We do um, international HR talks. We celebrate it since January this year, every two weeks. And we invite interesting people from all over the world to tell us what is happening in the labor market all over the world. Today, this edition will be held by Gloria, my colleague, and by myself. Um, we um, are German and Albanian. Gloria is now presenting herself, and we just entered the, the, in the MENA market in Dubai. And uh, two months ago, we bought there an office, which will be ready in two years. And um, we rented an office in the Dubai Media City. So very, very uh, central where all the technological companies are, um, are located. Why did we take this decision? I would like to tell our own experience, our own storytelling because um, we already had some clients in international headhunting in Dubai and in Riyadh and in Jeddah. And uh, we are um, helping um, executives in coaching there. So we thought um, that uh, the region is very interesting to attract talent there. Dubai is a booming zone, and especially Saudi Arabia. And so that's why we decided uh, to settle down there with our own company. It's already um, founded. And the experience to found a company in Dubai or a startup is amazing. Um, we had in two days, we had the trade license and we had the bank account. And when we come back first week of September, we will have also the visa, the residence. So um, I, I'm very impressed by the professional treatment all over the region. Everybody I met, um, Think uh, Ahmed and Svenja, you too, uh, are treating us in a very, very professional way. Yes. Uh, the first we did, we were we are members now in the German Chamber of Commerce and in the German Emirates Club, and in the Spanish Chamber of Commerce. And later, Ahmed, I come back to do, to you to the CEO Club in uh, in Dubai. And we already made members in the Women Council Club because you can't imagine, but the women uh, have very important positions in Dubai and they are very advanced much more than I ever thought yeah so and we are also start a new project for a big multinational in Dubai in September for a D&Y program a diversity and inclusion project to help women to be empowered for management positions so a lot of work to do and we are looking forward to that Okay, Gloria, um, could you please open our in, um, our um, presentation and so we present ourselves by the president. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Okay, you can see the presentation. 
Yeah, presentation yeah. mode, please. Yes, yes. I Thank you. You can get all our international Asia talks by, uh, we have a link with uh, the video and YouTube. Uh, we had very interesting speakers from Harvard University some weeks ago, from Singapore, from the, uh, from the HR hub and the startup hub in Singapore. We, re, uh, we had Pero Micic, who's a future manager, one of the best, no, best known one in Germany. So you can find all these um, talks, HR talks, in our LinkedIn profiles, and we can send it to you if you're interested. Yeah. OK. Um, OK, we will talk today about the labor market in UEAE and how do Headhunter really find you if you are interested to go to the UAE or if you're a company and you would like to know how does a Headhunter really work, the insights of a Headhunter, okay? Um, okay, Biku, you can go on, please, Gloria. Okay, um, I would like to present myself shortly. I'm German from Cologne. I was expatriated to Barcelona more than 30 years ago, very young from Bayer a company, a pharmaceutical uh, leading world company. And then I worked for 10 years in marketing in Bayer, Henkel, and in two local pharmaceutical companies, changing to HR um, consultancy more than 25 years ago, 20 years ago. I worked there as a, uh, in a German outplacement company. I worked in headhunting companies. And 19 years ago, I built up my own company, which is HR, uh, HR sorry, Advantage Consultoris. We are a um, boutique executive firm in headhunting, outplacement, and executive uh, coaching. We are, since the pandemic, we are working globally. We have a team of 18 uh, very international consultants. We speak nine languages between all of us. And uh, we are all women, only one intern, sorry for that. Uh, we have more luck with really very skilled and very, um, yeah, and very international uh, consult female consultants. Um, and um, we are based in Barcelona, Madrid with offices and Lisbon with offices. I'm based uh, since uh, 2020 in Nuremberg, commuting between Barcelona and Germany. And two months ago, we opened our company in, uh, in Dubai. Yes. Okay, uh, maybe Gloria, before going to the sheep, yeah, yeah. can you present yourself, please? Yes, of course. Well, thank you, Sylvia, for presenting our company and the project we have in Dubai. Very nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, my name is Gloria Progergi. Um, as Sylvia explained before, I am from Albania, a small and beautiful country in the Balkans. I studied there business administration, and then I decided to finish an MBA in, uh, in Barcelona. I came here, studied uh, the MBA with a focus in international business. But uh, during my uh, bachelor, but as well during uh, my master's, I understood that actually HR was the uh, yeah the topic that I was most interested about. So I started working in headhunting. I have been working in Advantage Consultores as a consultant for the last three years. We are working globally and finding the best talent uh, for our clients. As well in the digital world, um, I am working in headhunting projects. I finished a postgraduate program as well in digital marketing in order to understand better the competencies that uh, we are looking at our candidates. And uh, very happy to share with you our expertise today and dear gloria may i add that you are now the uh, consultant yeah. for dubai and uh, you have a lot of experience there and maybe if our business is running as well as we expect you are going maybe yeah. to, Dubai, to dubai yeah 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 we are thinking about that at the end i will explain two of the projects that i did for the region and i'll give you my insights about that okay fantastic okay let's start uh, first of all, uh, we can see some faces and some we can't see. So we would like to wake you up and to have a look. Um, uh, there are nine different sheep. How do you feel today? Please uh, put your answer, your number in the chat. Okay, we have here a nine, a five. A five, okay. I like the five one two. It's really jumping there, a lot of energy. 
Okay, the three one is very funny, isn't it? Yeah, what somebody says two, oh, it's smooth. Yeah, okay, Laura says, yeah, she's uh, like a little bit hiding her eyes. <laughs> uh, it's a funny, yeah. Okay, and Mahmoud says 15. There is no 15, Mahmoud. Okay, so he's he's out of the comfort zone. I can see it. Okay, okay. good. You can use this uh, picture when you think people are sleeping and then you wake them up, yeah? Okay, Gloria, next, please. Yeah, everybody knows we are living uh, never before we have so exponential changes in world than now. Uh, I personally did a program, an executive program in Singularity University in Silicon Valley in 2017, which is the university from Google and from NASA. And they showed us that never before in life we are living so exponential times. We are not growing uh, 10%, we are going 10 per 10, 10 times. And you know, sure, you know from the United States, the big challenges of, of the global life, which are there in every country and every continent in the world. We are living the climate change. Everybody is now sweating all over the world. Um, as we are working globally, yesterday we talked to Chicago, they are sweating, to Texas, they are sweating. We talked to Bangkok, they are sweating. Dubai, no way, they are always sweating in summer, but in Germany right now we are 38 degrees in the shadow and this is not normal anymore and we have no water and this will be one of the biggest challenges for all the, the businesses in the world to solve the water problem in the, pro in, the, in, the, in the future. If not, for example, South Europe won't exist anymore as we know, as we know it right now in 2050, it will be a desert. So it's a big, uh, um, for environmental companies and it's a really big challenge. I went to Florida last, uh, last month and I had a really a big shock that nobody is caring, uh, I, the people I met, uh, nobody was caring for the climate. They were not separating their their garbage, um, and they didn't. Um, there were no electric cars. Or I, I, I was really horrified, and I thought, my God, a lot of things to do to save the planet. Um, demographic change. Yeah, we all will be old, and, and now the baby boomers are leaving the labor market. From now on, over the next eight years. 10 millions of baby boomers will leave the European and the American labor market. 20 millions of talents are leaving. Who will fulfill this gap? Because young people now are not the same mentality as um, baby boomers. They want to work, yes, but they want to work for purpose. They want to enjoy well-being. This is okay but they don't want pressure, not everybody, but we see a lot of candidates don't want pressure. They don't want to go to the office every day and they want this well-being and this is not really as we baby boomer have been educated. And so there will be a big, big challenge for the labor market, how to fulfill this gap with really committed people and not only for one year, but for a longer time, yeah localization uh, we have a local global and, and local is really the big matter you can see uh, we will be manufacturing more now in Europe than in China we will have more renewable energies than from Russia everything is changing and a little bit back to the roots uh, which is not bad because really it's not sustainable anymore to buy in a company like Primark a t-shirt for two euros this is not what we need for our society no? Digitalization, okay, this has started 10 years ago. Everything is digital now. If you are not digital, you can't uh, go on with your company. Only 20 years ago, we had internet and now we are starting the new internet, uh, which is metaverse and everything will be metaverse. I saw an article yesterday in the German 
uh, reportage on the German television. It was incredible. It's called Utopia, if you want to see it in internet. Utopia, it, it was really scaring, but my, I think positive of the future. I think um, AI and VR and AR and robotization is very positive and will improve people's mankind if, if we use it in the right way. And urbanization, smart cities, everything is changing. So we need smart cities like, um, like Singapore, like in Saudi Arabia, the biggest uh, urbanization, um, smart urbanization is being built. And Dubai is a very, very smart city and, uh, and going into more and more into um, uh, renewable energies. So we are in exciting times, I think. I'm not scared. I think we are in the best times. Uh, of course, if you hear every day war, uh, we have a lack of uh, energy, yes, but it's a, a personal attitude to the world's life. We are even living better now than 70 years or 75 years ago, of course, yeah. Always we will have problems in the future we will have, but we will have a, a good of positive things thanks to technology, okay? This is a little bit overview of what's happening now in life um, on the planet and what's happening now in the, in the global make labor market and as well in, uh, in the Middle East. Yeah? The great resignation is here, not only in the US, it's here all over the world. And we can feel it as a headhunter. Companies are desperate, people are leaving, no engagement. Um, if uh, company, companies were not handled and managed well by real leaders who acted human-centric, who asked the people, how do you feel? How is your family? What can I do for you? And to listen to their labor, uh, to employees, these people are leaving now because they say, why shall I get up every day uh, without energy, without uh, enjoying my job? And they leave. They are not afraid anymore. And the people who are staying for 20, 25 years in the company are really changing, yeah? And it's a trending topic. Uh, you can see in everywhere in the social media, I left my job, you who, and they are doing a social, uh, um, uh, like a storytelling, who's doing the best quitting of their job. So it's really a trending topic. And uh, if you open your LinkedIn, you can see Constantly, every fourth uh, article is, uh, I, have I have a new job, yeah? This is a great migration and companies have a big challenge in front of them because or they improve their employer branding or people are leaving. And people retention, it's a very uh, old fashioned word. This is not the right word anymore, yeah? You have to do employ employee centricity, employee, um, employee engagement every day being very human, ask them, how do you feel? What can I do for you? Do you feel well in the company? And so um, the yearly performance interview are completely old fashioned. Interviews or feedback interviews are constantly, every week you have to ask and, and to have a good conversation with your people. Dramatic dynamic labor market, it's exponential. Everything is by LinkedIn and by networks, everything and by headhunters, depending on the position. Hiring and candidate attraction, we have never seen it before, never. I'm in headhunting for 25 years. And we ask our clients, please send us a video, a company brochure, send us something very interesting and make us part of your company. We are a part of your employer branding and we can attract the candidates you are not able to do. And we ask our clients, do nice videos with um, your employees. This is the best publicity for a company if uh, employees are saying, come to our company, they treat us uh, in this way. So it's really becoming everything marketing. Yeah, Marketing and HR is the power now. No? And um, something has changed dramatically from the power from the company. There is now a shift from the companies to the power of the candidates. The candidates tell us what they do they need, hybrid working, well-being, and four days labor week as we have in my company. We introduced it one and a half years ago, and we are really happy. Um, and the company has been more profitable than ever. Yeah. Okay, Gloria, go on. 
I'm going to speed up a little bit now because we want to see how do you search the candidates. Huh? Oh, next, next slide, yeah. Uh, talent attraction has to be human centric. We are looking for human beings, not for candidates or for roles. Um, the well being of the employees is crucial. Uh, we are looking for trust in the companies. Uh, I never ask my team, how many hours did you work today? In fact, they, I pay them for a 40, 40 hours a week, but they officially they work four days a week. But I don't mind. I want them to be um, self-determined, to be responsible for their projects, to treat well the candidates and the, the clients. And every morning we have a 45 minutes meeting to ask us how do how are you how was the weekend what are you doing uh, next weekend and we're talking about the project and this is crucial to listen to people yeah uh, now one day is a very long and eight hours there happen a lot of things uh, much more uh, quicker than before people strategy first and mental health is a very big problem eh? we know a lot of clients who are not there anymore, they are ill, they are on break, they are on illness break for several months, burnout. Burnout is the very big, big issue right now in candidates and in companies and in young people all over. So you have to invest in your company in mental health. Yeah, okay, next please. Now let's come to the UAE, yes. Um, why the UAE is attracting international talent, yeah? Because um, it's now, I was in a conference in the Chamber of Commerce in Dubai together with Gloria, and they told us that the, all of the international um, Chamber of Commerce in Dubai had a meeting, the French one, the American one, the German one, the Spanish one, and so on, yeah? And they met all together and they showed the forecast for, for the uh, growth, the economic growth in Middle East. And they said the first, first interesting zone is North Africa and Middle East, then Southeast Asia, but they didn't talk about Europe at all. Europe is not interesting for Middle East. We have so many problems in Europe right now. So we are not, they didn't even mention Europe. So Middle East is in a very good moment, especially Saudi Arabia and uh, Oman and Abu Dhabi and still Dubai, of course. Stable economy, zero taxes on income, safety, no criminality, a lot diversity is very strong right now. We know that we can do offers, job offers and writing. We are looking for a sales director, female. This in Germany would be absolutely or in Europe not possible, but we can say we're looking for a female sales director. And everything is very easy to become a visa and a residency in Dubai, and they have a really big infrastructure. And for entrepreneurs to get, to have a full ownership with innovative business idea, this is the place to be. Yeah. There is money for the, the, new, the young people and the startup. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the top recruiting trends. Um, yes, the candidate experience is crucial. And we have to um, explain very well the project to the candidates to attract them and to give a constant feedback, never leave alone a candidate uh, and never not giving him a feedback if uh, he or she is not selected. This is for us, it's like the Bible, yeah. Okay, go on, Gloria can be a little bit more, more agile. Uh, the hybrid work mobile, mobile, 70 companies are using hybrid working in the UAE and uh, they can see an increased uh, employee happiness because of that. And um, this is very important to attract candidates, the hybrid work model, yeah? Okay, D&Y, uh, it's very important for um, companies in the UAE, UAE because it improves your company image, uh, better employer branding, more innovation, and one of three candidates only are going to um, apply to companies who have a D&Y um, strategy in the UAE. So it's very advanced already. Employer branding, uh, very important, better candidate experience, and they want to know what is the culture behind the company, yeah? Okay, AI-based, we use now AI in uh, recruitment, 
We use it for the, for example, for young people, we use it for the first um, CVs and we use it for matching the CV with a job, uh, with a job um, requirement. So AI will be more and more used, but not for the final interviews. We need the human part, not only the uh, AI part. We are working now with a lot of numbers. Everything in, uh, in the world is now data-driven, data plus business. These are the profiles we are looking for. And companies who don't use data by their digitalization can't take really good uh, decisions, yeah? They, we need data for doing good batches, to speed up time to hire, and unbiased hiring. Okay, mobilization of internal talent. Companies try to, um, because of the situation, they need to push up internal and to boost internal talent. Um, they need very well-designed talent programs, a healthy competition, uh, and lower, lower hiring costs, because now companies have to de uh, dedicate a lot of money for hiring costs, yeah, okay. And the trends are six out of 10 jobs in the UIA and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia are digital focused. We know that we have a digital company for that. And 78% of people are considering changing roles. This is incredible. Before we contacted candidates by LinkedIn and we had more or less a 40 to 50% of interested candidates. Now a 95% of candidates would like to listen. So this is something you have to know. All your employees right now are being touched by headhunters. So <laughs> you, you have to be very human centric to avoid that they are leaving, yeah? Okay. And skills as big data, network security, machine learning uh, are the most fast growing skills in the region. And now I am, we are coming to the last part of my presentation. What are the most demanded profiles uh, in the UAE? Everything to do with data, data scientists, data analysts, and data strategists. These are three very important positions. Uh, knowing how to present to the business data. Mm -hmm. Backend developer, software, content creators for social networks. Cybersecurity is a very big issue because a lot of companies are being attacked. And so cybersecurity, we can see it all over the world, is really one of the big uh, issues. And marketing are very well, digital marketing are a lot um, sought for the UAE, yes. And in the middle management, uh, um, finance, uh, Dubai is a finance hub. Dubai uh, is also a hub for, um, uh, for um, aerospace. They will be built one of the biggest uh, global aerospace hubs. So uh, engineers, of course, HR is a big issue, sales and business development, of course, and operations uh, for the companies who are operating with uh, production sites there. And in the C-level positions, we're looking everything we see, of course, women, because all the company want women, everybody. <laughs> Not because of the quota, but they want diversity in their, in their, um, in their boards. And so we are looking for CEOs, COOs, chief digital officers, chief sales officers, chief financial officers, chief marketing officers. No? Uh, the C level uh, is very important in UAE. Most of them are expats because the local people are not working more, uh, more or less in the international companies. They are more in governmental positions uh, and uh, in, in important political positions. Uh, we have. Um, how many people are living in, the, in Dubai, um, Gloria? It was uh, 3.3 3, 3 million, no, 3.5. Okay. And in 2019, it was 3.1. So the population is increasing. 10% of people in Dubai, for example, are local people and 90% are expatriates from abroad. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, salary trends are increasing. Salaries are much more higher than in Europe. Gloria, how much more was it? It's paid more uh, monthly, but yes. I think it was 50 to 100 percent higher than yeah, in yeah. Europe. For, yeah, for more for director roles are much yeah. higher. Yeah. 
And uh, but candidates are not only looking for money; they are looking for well-being, flexible working, hybrid working, airline tickets, education allowance, family helps, and family visas, and so on. Salary is important, but not the most important anymore. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Later, you can ask me in, in the Q&A session. Okay, Gloria, now your turn. Perfect, Sylvia. Well, thank you very much for giving us a quick summary on what's happening globally and in the UAE as well. So now I'll explain you um, how do we search candidates and uh, how do we search candidates by LinkedIn recruiter? Because of course we are searching them in many in many different ways. Of course we have a huge network, as Sylvia explained. We are part of different chamber of commerces and different groups that allow us to have uh, direct contact with uh, many candidates and many companies, and we are using that network to find people in the UAE and Middle East as well. Of course, candidates from former processes, as Sylvia explained, we're trying to make that candidate experience the best possible. So even if they're not hired at the end, they are still open to participate in other processes that, that we have and to, to have further collaborations with them. Of course, our databases, we have um, database, cloud-based um, one that uh, allows us to have um, CVs and uh, more information from the candidates and then to send them directly different roles that we think that they might fit. LinkedIn recruiter, of course, that's, um, let's say, uh, one of our main uh, sources of candidates. But as well in the UAE, we're going to more local websites, as Sylvia said, global, but local as well. So uh, Bay.com, Kale Times Job, Indeed, of course, Gulf, uh, Gulf Talent and Glassdoor are some of the websites that we can suggest to you um, to have a look in case you are uh, searching for a job in the um, in the region. So our headhunters insights. Um, I'd like to uh, explain you briefly how do we um, search for candidates and what is our process step by step at advantage. So um, in order to, to find the best candidate, of course, we need to understand very well what is the company looking for. So we do a very extensive client briefing. We meet them uh, and we try to understand very well what are they looking for, but not only in terms of the um, hard skills, let's say, in terms of um, the position itself, but as well in terms of the soft skills. So what are you looking um, at the person side? What kind of, of person? Is there a lot of resilience at the, at the, um, at the job? Uh, slot or is there a lot of innovative need for innovative ideas so we're trying to understand as well what kind of person at the end of the day are they looking for and then it comes the candidate sourcing we are uh, sourcing candidates as i explained before from different sources and trying to be as innovative and as um, yeah, with uh, more ideas, let's say, in order to find the best of them. We have the candidate presentation. Um, we are there with the client, of course, um, doing the interviews with them and trying to understand the strong points of the candidate and if there is a fit with the company. We do the, inter um, the, the in-depth interviews with them. Um, we are it's a bit linked with what I said before, but of course, we're trying to understand now as well, um, how are they as persons, we're trying to do competence interviews, so to understand better um, their, their strong uh, skills more than on the on the job, but as well as as persons, the final candidates are then um, yeah, we are then decided which the clients think that they fit best. And then we have the closing and the follow up where we are present as well. We are doing, we are helping them on the negotiation of the of the contract and of course doing follow up. We offer coaching sessions with them in order to have the best, um, yeah, the best process of um yeah, um, understanding on how is the how is the candidate feeling at the company? Is there anything he might need? Is there anything that it's not as he was expecting? And um, yeah, trying to uh, make that period as smooth as possible. As, um, sorry, Gloria, for interrupting. Yeah, what changed before the pandemic and after the pandemic? Before we needed pro for a process, maybe two or three months. Now we present the first candidates after two weeks. Yeah or sometimes after one week, yeah, depends. Yeah. So uh, it, it has speed, uh, 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 spe speed up the process uh, exponentially. It's everything, we have a meeting with the, uh, the client every week to present 
long list and one pager. So it's going very agile now. And sometimes we close projects in four weeks and in the past it was not possible at all. No? Yeah, and as well, people are now more available, of course, because they are working, since they're working from home, um, many days of the week, they can organize themselves better. So the candidates have more time for interviews and for uh, they are more available. And as well, of course, the, the clients have more flexibility in order to present them, as Sylvia said, yes. um, two to three candidates per week. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, and then LinkedIn, what is it? Uh, well, I believe all of you know it and you know the importance of it. Uh, it was founded in 2003. It's the wor uh, world's largest professional network on the internet. It was used to find better job opportunities um, at the beginning uh, or internships, of course, uh, connect and strengthen our professional relationship and learn how to succeed in your career. Um, and then there are some insights on 700 million users uh, available in 24 languages, 55 job application every second, 20 million job listed, uh, open job listed, and over 11 million uh, C-level executive members globally. I think it would be interesting to mention that um, we believe that LinkedIn is much more than just a professional network right now. It's, it's becoming as well a kind of a social network. But I believe people should um, should understand that you should not go to LinkedIn only if you are not happy with your job or if you're searching for a job. You should continuously be there. You should continuously connect with people, be part of the groups, share your thoughts, share your insights on the market. And um, yeah, create a community, be, be part of this big community that uh, really helps people to, yeah, to get better job opportunities at the end of the day, but as well to be, to be better, better people, because there you can learn, you can connect to other people, you can help other people finding a better job. And I think that's, um, that's very interesting. And then um, we have thought to um, explain you some case studies um, and two examples of two searches that we did in Middle East. And then um, by explaining them step to step, I'll explain you how do we search on LinkedIn as well. The first case, it's a business developer, business development manager um, for a fast moving consumer group company that we found for Dubai. And then a general manager role for a flexible packaging company that we searched for the UAE. So it was kind of, it could be based um, anywhere. So I'll stop sharing the presentation and I'll share you my um, LinkedIn page my day-to-day -to -day tool of work. I'll show you my secrets. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Okay, this LinkedIn recruiter is only for headhunters. Yeah. It's, it's quite expensive. <laughs> yeah. one, one license costs 6,000 euros. And we, of course, we have six or seven in our company. And this year, LinkedIn has increased the price at 25%. They have a monopoly. They can do it. So we are really dependent. And that's why we also have to widen our network and to know a lot of people not only depend on this, uh, this tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, this is um, my LinkedIn recruiter page here at the, at the top. You can see the recruiter, as Sylvia said, it's a paid service that LinkedIn gives you. Um, it's quite good, but of course you should uh, have other resources as well. And here we can create our projects. We can as well post job, um, like do job posts. But normally, since we are doing head hunting, we are connecting, to, we are contacting the candidates directly and not doing that much um, job posting. So, if you agree, I'd like to explain you first uh, how does it work, and then the examples. Um, so here we have different, um, different. Um, yeah, sections, let's say it's a talent pool one, pipeline and project settings. In the talent pool one, it's where we find the candidates. So at the beginning, we have uh, we have different uh, different spots that we can find uh, that we can use. The first one is the spotlights in LinkedIn. This was something that was added uh, recently. And here you can see, and you can connect with candidates that are open to work, that are more likely to respond, engage with talent brand, have company connection or past applicants. Here, I would say that um, since we can use um, this one here, it's very interesting for you to have that open to work um, 
opportunity if you are searching for a job because then we can find you easily and then with this one here we we know that you are in search of a, of a job and we contact you and then there are the candidates that are more likely to respond these are people that maybe if we have uh, contacted them before they have answered to us or people that are most willing to answer to linkedin and linkedin brings them as well here engage with talent brands here of course we give you the advice to be engaged and to be connected with as many brands um, that you think are interesting for your job and of course have company connections you see that people that have more company connections of course uh, will show up in the search um, first because at the end of the day of course LinkedIn it's an AI tool and if you give to LinkedIn if you have more connections if you are more part of it if you are posting if you are um, talking to people then of course he will bring you first at this at the search and then we have the job titles of course, um, a very important part of our search is to find the job, the, um, the important, the yeah, the most suitable job searches uh, for our positions. Here we can use um, multiple ones. I will explain you with the examples as well. And of course, here it's very important to have a job title that it's really generic and it's something that you would think that a headhunter would think of. For example, there are many people in the HR work that have as well chief happiness officer, which is great, but not that many headhunters would, would search for that. So maybe when having the job titles, think of more generic and generalic um, titles that more people would search you for. And then we have the locations, of course, we're searching um, at the beginning, we're searching for more specific locations, kind of, for example, here comes up Catalonia, Girona, Tarragona, Lleida, Barcelona, of course, and then we would go to more um, a regional and then Catalonia or more Spain, if we're not finding um, in a specific area the candidates. And then we have the work types. Um, this was something that LinkedIn added um, recently after the pandemic, let's say, because there are many candidates who are only willing to work on sites, only willing to work remote, or they're interested for a hybrid role. So as well, if you are only willing to work remote, put that into your profile, because of course that would help the headhunter to not contact you in case he has a position that it's only on site. So um, it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting thing to have it in your uh, profile as well, the workplace type um, that you are mostly interested in. Where you can find that? You can find that on the um, open to work. Um, yeah, when you go to open to work, you, you can decide there, which is your work type place, which is the location and what are your job titles that you are most interested in. And then we have the skills and assessment. Very interesting um, to have into all of your profiles. Please, uh, you, I think you can uh, choose up to 40 or 50 of them. So please choose as many as you can and make people as well endorse them because that would be more uh, interesting. We use um, the skills and assessments for, I will show you uh, at the example, but if we are searching for an HR director that needs to know SAP, and then we would put the skill, um, we would put the SAP there. For example, here it gives you AutoCAD. So if I'm searching for uh, an architect that needs to know this, then I would put it there. So please use the um, skills and assessment um, part as much as you can and put all the skills that you think that are interesting for your um, for your job, of course. And then we can choose by company, of course, because there are some, yeah, some occasions where the clients um, have a target company uh, or some co target companies and we would go and search there for the best candidates. We search um, with schools or universities, but not that uh, much, let's say. What we mostly do is that we would search for um, field of studies. For example, uh, if I'm searching for a general manager for the flexible packaging industry, then I would go for someone that has studied something related to chemical, chemical industry, chemical uh, engineering, or uh, etc. So we would use more the field of study. So it would be very interesting to have as well, of course, your studies in your in your um, LinkedIn profile, some things that um, it's not that important, but it's quite important to have at least the field of studies there. Year of graduation, we would use it in case we are searching for an intern or for someone that it's um, yeah entry level. And then very yes, and yeah. um, I'm looking looking at the uh, time scale, and uh, yeah. I would ask you only to 
to show one example because we would like to oh, have some time for the Q&A. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, and then we have the industries, of course, where uh, this is a very important um, tool for us. Because uh, if we are searching, normally when we are searching, you cannot search from all the industries because the client wants something very uh, similar to what they're what they're doing. So um, here we have many options that LinkedIn gives you. And our advice, of course, would be to choose very carefully the industry you put in. There are some uh, companies that have different industries where they are might be so you might be playing a bit with that you might be putting one week and one and then another week one to see a bit the response of the recruiters as well and um for example it's as well the hr people they put just human resources but maybe the company it's in the mechanical and industrial engineering work so you should choose very carefully the industry that you put on linkedin because he only lets you choose one <laughs> so that would that must be very carefully chosen and then the keywords um very important for us we use it as well a lot as a filter um here we use um, in your profiles you should have the exact keywords of your um of of your job job responsibilities you should get a job um job description maybe that you that you think that you fit very well and try to find there what are the keywords you should have summaries on your profile that are very carefully the words chosen that you think that maybe the recruiters could search you um, with those keywords um employment type of course full-time part-time contract put that there if in case you are not willing to work full-time then very interesting to to have it there as well spoken language is very important to have the languages in your profile, but as well, what proficiency you have there. Because if I see it's a German, but you're elementary and I'm looking for a full professional, then it does not help me. So we need as well the level there, seniority. Um, this comes with the years of experience. So if you have all your experiences, LinkedIn will help you with that. Field of study, as I said, very important to have it there. And then we have the advanced where you can show the um, where we use the years of experience, of course, the years of experience in current companies. We use um, sometimes we use the current company if we need it. And what I wanted to show you that's very interesting, it's the recruiting and candidate activity where we use a lot the um, filter of groups. So, for example, uh, here it will show Harvard Business Review, LinkedIn, HR, Human Resources Group. So I would advise you to be part of as many groups on LinkedIn as you can, of course, that are of your interest um, and that are similar to your professional area, because normally we search by groups as well. We go to different groups and then we search people there and then we contact there. So if you are in many groups then you are you have more connections and then um, there are more possibilities that you will show up in our search. Okay, so I will show you the, the example. The example that I had prepared um, is the business development manager for the fast moving consumer good company that we found for Dubai. Um, in the job titles, I used uh, business development, but of course, we go a bit further because it's true that the client wants a business development, but as well, someone who is a sales manager can do it. Someone who is a trade marketing manager as well um, has the knowledge and might do it. I put as well head of business development, a category manager, because of course, a category manager knows very well the supermarkets in case he's working in a supermarket, and that's important for the client as well, and a category development managers. We can use many more. We can choose more, of course, head of international business development, partnership, client development. But uh, as I said, very important to choose very carefully your job title. Here it can be current or past. We can choose as well. In terms of location, I went for Dubai in case I want to find people in Dubai. And then maybe I'll go to Abu Dhabi for people that are willing to relocate or of course, uh, as Sylvia said, we are attracting uh, candidates, international candidates to um, to Dubai. So we will always use the open to relocate for people who are open, and then we will um, we will check with them in terms of skills. Here, for example, it was very important for me to have sales, of course, because we are looking for someone that will open the market in the in the country and for revenue and growth, uh, revenue and profit growth, because they wanted someone that has knowledge of the revenue growth management. So I'll put that on. On the skills as well and the industries um the company was a company in the food and beverages um, industry they were producing olive oil 
So I put food and beverages, food production, retail, because sometimes uh, there are some companies of retail that were interesting as well. For example, they were looking for supermarkets and as well I put that there and consumer goods. In terms of keywords, and here comes the example, they were searching for someone that had to have experience with modern trade, like it's traditional trade or a kind, but they needed experience with modern trade. So I'll put that there. I put modern trade or oreca because as well was um, someone something that they would think of. Or in the other example that I wanted to give you in the flexible packaging world, they were looking for someone in experience with adhesives or films or inks. So these keywords of the of the positions are very important. Not to put just generic words. That's important for the job title, but in the description might must be very um, yeah carefully chosen keywords. And then uh, in the spoken languages, in this case, we were looking for someone that would speak Arabic because um, he would work with the distributor that they have in Dubai. So they needed to communicate in Arabic. So I put that there, of course, and English, I, I, I put any in order to have more people, but then maybe I would go to full professional or native. I'll play a bit with that. And of course, in terms of seniority, for example, I would go for a manager or for a senior because we were searching for a senior role in this case. Uh, and this would be, let's say, at the beginning, my, my search. You see here that I have 631 results. I would go and I would search them. And then I would, um, con yeah, for example, Ali um, Abed Al-Yali would be something, someone that would interest me because I see that he's working as a key account in modern trade, field sales in modern trade. I see that he comes from the fast moving um, food industry, snack food. Um, so he would be something, uh, someone that would be interesting for me. I would save him to the pipeline and then send him the message and contact him. Just one small uh, advice as well on the on the messaging part. Uh, please read carefully the messages from the recruiters and answer them with what they're asking you. If they're asking you for slots, if they're asking you for availability, if they're asking you for their for your phone number, give them that. Then just say yes, I'm interested. But then what? Give me your number, give me your CV, give me your availability, because then it will take more time. And then maybe people who just gave the, your number have a better opportunity than, uh, than you. And then con connect with as many headhunters as you can. We always check our connections. We always check our network, as Sylvia said before, doing uh, direct search. So we have those candidates um, yeah, on top of our mind when we are searching. So yeah, this Thank would you, be Gloria. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. perf I'm always impressed by your presentation because it's really a very hard work to find the right candidates. Eh? It, it took a lot of time. Um, only I... two minutes, Gloria. Could you show my profile, um, not by a recruiter, if it's possible? I would yeah. like to add the importance of your branding when you're looking for a new job. Uh, there, Mohamed was asking, how can I show to the region what I'm able to do? Yes. And I would like to show you mm, a little bit my president, the importance of branding in your LinkedIn profile. Uh, yeah. Most of people are writing the title and this is not a branding. A branding is uh, a branding is what makes you different. Can you make it bigger, please? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. If not, don't worry. Okay, uh, I had before, uh, I, I put there in the title, uh, direct di ad uh, advantage consultors. This doesn't mean anything. It's just a title, it's not me. You have to find out what makes you different from other people. Everybody has a, a added value. Everybody is different. And that's why I wrote, I'm a CEO and founder. I'm a global and digital headhunter. This is what I'm doing. I'm an executive coach and female career coach. That's what I'm doing. I'm a humanizer. That is uh, the way I'm doing it. Yeah, I try to humanize my relationships. I'm a pure networker. This is my real passion in life. I'm a futurist. I'm trained in the future trends of, for a global community. I went to Singularity University and I'm a leader and founder of a female HR forum in Spain with 300 women. I'm a mucho thinker. I'm thinking 10 times 
bigger, like um, as, um, as uh, John F. Kennedy said, we are going to the moon. And I'm based in Barcelona, Nuremberg, and Dubai. So in, in very few words, this is what makes me different from other candidates or other headhunter. You have to find your, um, yes, your branding. What makes you different? Where are you good at? And why should people contact you? This is a very elaborated profile. Right? And then you need a photo in the, in the front, something which you really, uh, I did it in the American way. This is typical for Silicon Valley of all the events I'm organizing. I put a lot of photos there, no? but this is very personal, but it has something to do with your job. If you're from renewable energies, put something from renewable energies. If you're from smart city, put a photo about smart city, put something related, where are you expert in? Yes. And this is very, very important. And then about you, you have to write some some text which is different. A lot of posts, please, a lot of videos. Um, it's very important to put videos on your profile, yeah? We, because we are visual. We need videos, not only text, yeah? Okay, we can go to the Q&A. You can leave it. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you a lot for everything. Who has got a question? Mohamed, uh, um, start. You wanted to ask something. Uh, how are you, everyone? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Uh, I changed my location a few days ago. I'm coming to Dubai. I'm chasing a big, bigger thing. I had my own company in my country, but now I want to uh, experience another thing bigger. Uh, so I try to post uh, every, every work ch changes that uh, has the same mm -hmm. uh, paths okay. as my goals as. Okay. Uh, but uh, I have one problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I will go to the question. I just uh, introduce the problem. Uh, the question is uh, when you have uh, too much talents, it's hard to find work because mm -hmm. uh, as I, you know, here in Dubai, it's uh, about tasks. Jobs are about tasks. Mm -hmm. They need something, someone uh, who is uh, speciality, uh, speciality is, for example, interior uh, designer, mm -hmm. just this. But mm -hmm. my experience is uh, I'm holding a, a situation where I, where I do everything managing the project, designing uh, everything about uh, construction in site or office works. Okay. So it's hard to me to show my experience. Because, mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah, you can Moment, answer. Um, you please write me an email. Yes, I'm, I'm sending you now my email. Write me an email, please, and I'm going to help you. First of all, we need a very good elevator pitch, uh, two minutes spot. You have to present yourself much more concrete much more focused because people are, are getting bored if you're telling very general things. You have to say, um, I, I am Dubai, I'm coming from this sector, I had an own company and I'm looking for. And this must be very precise uh, and you can have to train it. And this uh, you, in Dubai is a very focused uh, uh, country. And people are very professional. You have to tell your professional ob objective and what you can add in a very precise way. Send me an email and I will help you on this, okay? Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mohamed. Who else has a question? Maybe Ahmed, you would like to know how to sell better your company? Well, this sounds good, actually. I, was, I agree with you. It was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, Gloria. Um, we are actually expanding our, our, our brand as well. Currently, we're uh, expanding to London. I'm not sure it's a good time. We know according to what's happening now in Europe. Uh, definitely um, still a challenge to hire from here or hire from somewhere in London. So definitely the competition is, is, is very high in the market here. So choosing the right person, knowing the product and guarantee that you will give results is, is, is very challenging. 
So yeah. you can give me your thoughts. What do you think about that and how we can overcome the, the situation happening in Europe? And do you think the recruitment in Europe is easier or uh, recruit uh, the, the members, the team members from, from the UAE? We will have a personal, a, a private session if you agree. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, LinkedIn is very important. You have to show a lot of events you're organizing for the CEOs of your region. Uh, ask, ask the CEOs for testimonials. Why did they join the CEO club in Dubai? Uh, so th this is what is working now. Yeah, testimonials, um, uh, member, uh, member experience. This is what is working. Yeah. But write to me, I, I can give you some tips, yeah? Okay. Svenja, Thank have you got any, sorry, sorry, Ahmed, sorry. Uh, anything more to ask? No, 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 I just wanna thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that, thank you. Thank you. Svenja, have you got a question? Yeah, maybe one question to Gloria. Um, thanks a lot for showing the recruiter tool. And I mean, the way you are looking for um, the talent according to the job description. But doesn't this end up that we kind of over, always hire the same people for the same jobs? Because you would then, you know, you if you're looking for, a, I don't know what it was, um, HR manager, um, and you only look for HR managers um, in the past, then, you know, they always have the same background. Are we not looking a bit more now for all also a diverse background how would you do that yeah well th that depends and that's what i said that um uh, for example i i said to your business development but then i would go to a trade marketing as well i'd go to someone that has worked in category management as well i know it's similar but we are not only searching for people with the same um the same background or the same titles we are always of course needs to have some kind of relation and it depends on what the client is searching for. But in case they're looking for someone who is innovative, out of the box thinking, um, coming to transform things at the company, then we would search for people with a more um, yeah, diverse background and would put titles that are maybe similar, but not the, but not the same. And we would search maybe for people that are coming from different industries. I think it's it's important if it's an industrial company, but we can get there someone that it's coming from the retail world, that it's used to work very fast paced, quick decision made, making, then he would bring something different to the company. Yeah. So it's only not only in terms of the job title, but as well in terms of the industry that they worked on and in terms of the countries that you've been at, so. Yeah. And in digital profiles, we are not looking for the same sector. Um, all yeah. clients in digital want people coming from other sectors to disrupt. Um, so it's very important, yeah. And there are some positions as HR or uh, finance uh, or legal where you don't need the sector. It, it doesn't matter, we're looking for the person. Do you think, Gloria, in the future, LinkedIn will put uh, uh, some uh, some item gen of gender? To think, do you think? No, no, no I don't think so. <laughs> they should not, <laughs> uh, because everybody's looking women for women and, and talk. Yeah, but I think to yeah, but no, no it won't come. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what is our time? We are at exact two o'clock. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, four o'clock. <laughs> Thank you very much for your, your time and your presence and your interest. We are going to send you the video over the next uh, days. Yeah. Thank you very much and open for your email for helping you personally. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank Thank you. Bye.